but um how have you been now in south africa well, been? I've, I've, I've been good i have you know with covid 19 and uh with the lockdown measures mm-hmm. in place it's not as busy as it would ideally be but um you know I know I, if you keep up with the news, you'll realize that from Monday we'll be entering stage three of lockdown, which will allow a little bit more movement, you know. So, um, but otherwise, so far, so good. Mm, not bad at all. Thank you for having me. Okay. Um, let's get to know you. Um, who is um, Loreto Letsoso? <laughs> Well, Lerato Letsuso is in the business of telling stories. You know, I'm a, I'm a storyteller of note. Uh, I use different mediums to tell my stories, um, whether it's through TV, radio, whether it's through writing, whether it's through singing. I just uh, always just tell stories. And that has, uh, that my love for stories have, has led me into performing arts uh, uh, from from when I was a young mm. girl, you know, and um, eventually after about 18 years experience with uh, performance arts, I got introduced mm. to broadcasting, uh, you know, and I've done different uh, types of media. I've done television, I've done radio, I've done print, and I've also done digital. Um, however, since 2018, I decided uh, to you know, to, how do you say, to sort of reinvent myself because I've always wanted to write, uh, to write a book. Okay. So I decided to take some time to, to really write a book and, 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 you know, and establish myself as an author, you know, because I have a dream of becoming a bestseller author internationally. So I finally got to do that and uh, I released my first offering as an author um, uh, in April 2020, not so long ago. And uh, yeah, so um, I'm just a young African woman who is very passionate about Africa and who is also very passionate about telling African stories. And I really want um, us to go into uh, those spaces and, and, and tell the world um, our stories, you know, and something that's different from the usual stereotype narrative about Africa being in the bush and us playing with with wild animals or, you know, how the media is always, um, you know, um, making us to look like um, vilifying us or making only, uh, you know, highlighting only our pain and our suffering as Africans. There's so much more. I would like the world to know that there's so much more to Africa than uh, us being in the bush, than us being third world countries uh, like we have been dubbed. And uh, there's so much more to us than all the other sorrowful and, you know, negative publicity that we usually uh, enjoy um, in the rest of the world. So uh, what other way than to make sure that we tell our stories and people get to see and experience other parts of who we are as Africans, how we have evolved, how, where we come from, where we are at the moment, and just, you know, keeping them updated in terms of where we're going. Yeah. So that's me in a nutshell. Yeah. Okay. Let's, uh, let, let's get to um, know... Um, can you tell us briefly about your educational background and um, family, childhood? Well, educational background, I, I studied uh, in, in a town called Kimberley, South Africa, in the Northern Cape. Um, uh, I, I, did, I matriculated there and I went to do musical theater at what was known as Technicon Pretoria. For a year, I got my certificate for that, my national certificate rather. And uh, I also have a certificate from uh, Vivian Goosen, uh, Storytelling, uh, which I also acquired afterwards. Okay. And, um, you know, I uh, did a BA in communications with UNISA, which I'm actually still uh, busy with. But um, 
in terms of education and qualification background, I'm a performance arts trained and storytelling trained uh, professional who ended up also just acquiring the rest of my experiences through work experience. I think I've just been fortunate by coming across people, especially bosses, who really also became more than just bosses to me and also took the positions of being a mentor to my life and make sure that they expose me to opportunities, uh, you know, opportunities to grow as, as a professional and opportunities to develop uh, as, 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 a, as an African woman. And uh, I owe a lot of my doors and, and, and opportunities to a lot of some of my former bosses from even way back in South Africa, even before I came to Ghana and so forth. And uh, like I said, I'm, I, I'm a lover of stories. You know, I've always loved stories. So from childhood, um, I was exposed uh, to stories uh, to, through my father, my late father. Unfortunately, he's no more. Mm. But he used to tell mm. us stories before we go to bed. Oh, wow. Sorry. You know, my brother and I... Um, so okay. he really is the first person that gave me an experience of stories, um, even though he didn't per se read read them out of a book. He had rather told them, narrated them, you know, to us. But he made me fall in love with, sto with stories. And then later on, uh, the father of my children, the man that I would marry, uh, sort of really... Um, made me fall in love with books because he was such a reader himself, you know, so I, I got to also appreciate books more because of him. I mean, I've always been exposed to reading before through school and so forth, but not necessarily reading for enjoy enjoyment. I wouldn't go out of my way just to get a copy of a book to read out of enjoyment. I would read because it's part of the curriculum, <laughs> you know, but he, he used to, he used to read for enjoyment and, and he really rubbed that off to me. He would sometimes even recommend books to me to read and I caught the flame, you know, and uh, I've, ever since then I've never been the same. I fell in love with books as well. So there's a combination of, of my father's influence, my late husband's influence. Um, and then, yeah, and then, uh, you know, um, I've, I've always been an artsy, like a girl through and through from when I was young. You know, in, in my school years, I was known for... For, for, for being a performer, you know, I, I was a stage girl, um, choir, I'm there, uh, drama, I'm there, you know, <laughs> so, 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 yeah, I, I come from that background, so that's why for me, it, it wasn't even something that I would think about when I, when I chose to study musical theatre, because for me, it was like, that's what I do, that's who I am. And, and, and I thought I would be this star, performance star, until later on, you know, when life happens and then you have kids and you realize that your body changes and you can't really, um, you know, commit uh, in some of these crafts the way, you know, with women, it's quite an issue sometimes, you know, when you really want to have a family, the, 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 the professional world is set up in such a way that it's not fair to us women who want it all, like who want to have a, a family and have children, you know, um, uh, we, we get frowned upon for, for being pregnant, for instance, you can easily lose your job for being pregnant. Uh, people could easily write you off the script uh, for being pregnant, you know, or, or for having maybe you are at work and your baby is not well, you know, and you can't come again. You know, those things can really count against you as a woman, you know, um, as opposed to when you, you were a man. So some of these things, even though we'd like to have it all, but sometimes we really are put in a position where we have to choose, which is the unfortunate part. And, uh, and, and for me, because I really wanted to have a family so bad, I, I, I was forced to then think, you know, of how am I going to re- You know, going to something is totally against who I am and what I believe in. And, and, and there was broadcasting and I started with radio, I wish radio really was great because no matter how much weight I had added, you know, post giving birth, uh, nobody could see me. So nobody would judge me on the basis of how I looked. It was just my voice. But once I, I, I got my confidence back, you know, and uh, I lost all the baby fat and the kids were old enough to go to nursery school, 
I, 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 I craved the camera, uh, you know, I wanted to be back in the spotlight and uh, fortunately I was, I was given that second opportunity, um, you know, to, to, to start afresh and, and, but this time around I, I decided to rather continue with broadcasting and I froze performance arts for, for some time. I actually just forgot about it until just recently, yeah. Um, you've come across as a versatile woman. How do you handle being a news anchor, a writer, and songstress at the same time? There's nothing to handle time? because that's who I am. You know, if 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 it wasn't part of who I am, it's not like I have to uh, pretend or I have to wear a suit. That's just yeah. me. I am a versatile person. You know, and and it has been both a blessing and a curse because I remember for the longest time in my life, people used to make me feel like there was something wrong with me. Sometimes people can misunderstand being versatile as somebody who lacks focus or lacks direction because uh, the system teaches us that you must pick one thing and focus on it, you know. But here I was, you know, I, I enjoyed to sing, I enjoyed to dance, I enjoyed to act, you know, I, I, I was a good writer, you know. So it, it was a little bit confusing and I enjoyed all of it and I think um, as time went on as I as I grew up uh, and matured in the professional world I actually just found a way on how I could synchronize those those talents and I think broadcasting offered me uh, um, uh, you know an opportunity to be able to do that because for instance in in, t in television I would sometimes have you know the the, the privilege of scripting you know, which is part of writing. So you, you produce, you script, then at the same time, you still have the opportunity to be the presenter. And then sometimes you have the opportunity to, you know, so it, 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 it's different roles, but I think it also benefits you when you, you, you are a good writer, even though you are a presenter, mm -hmm. because even when scripts are given to you and you go through them, you are able to then, you know, edit your scripts in a way that you feel will be better. You're able to, to assist your environment in more than just one role. You can double up as this slash this. And for me, I feel like it's, uh, it's something that every employer should be happy about to have somebody who can multitask and double up in different roles because in the event that you need certain human resource in a certain area i'm able to to run and be that you know when they need a reporter somewhere i can quickly go and be a reporter i don't say that no i don't report i only present in studio you know, so if I need to be in the field, I'm in the field. Yeah. If I'm in the studio, I'm in the studio. If I, yes, if I need yeah, to be in a lifestyle yeah. show, I'll be in a lifestyle show. If I need to be in a current affairs show, I'll be in a current affairs show. And I will do all those things equally just as good. So I, I think it's just a gift that I have. Um, and, and obviously, in addition to just having the gift is also to just continue to harness your skill, you know, to make sure that you don't lose touch. Read as much as you can, I mean, and, and, and you know, and listen, pay attention to what's happening around you. Stay current to know what's happening around the world and, and know how to keep being competitive uh, and, and, and ways of remaining relevant and competitive is to always make sure that, you know, you make sure that you're not too complacent and you keep on Im improving and, and reinventing yourself to make sure that, you know, I, I took a break on purpose, but I know even if anything happens tomorrow and I was supposed to come back and read a news bulletin, I will still deliver like I, I left yesterday you know, because it's, it's, it's something that I'm passionate about and that I'm, I'm, I'm skillful. It's a skill. You can't take that away from me. <laughs> you know, it, it's, it's something that you cannot take away from me. Does, yeah. uh, does anyone play um, the role of a mentor or coach in your life? Yes. And, and, and it's not just one person. I, I, I think I'm one of the most privileged people in the sense that I, I, I have a cocktail mm. of, 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 of influences, you know, and, and, and all these people mm. in the, in the, in the, you know, in the respective 
areas are always imparting in me and you can imagine when 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 people different people are pouring into me they are different expertise I, I have no choice but to be better as a person you know I have um, most of them are my former employers I've got Dr. Lucas Moloi who has always been a mentor to me I've got uh, Mr. Rosh uh, uh, Mama Bolo who's a businessman and entrepreneur actually one of the people who gave me my first break on radio um um who, who still is accessible uh even dr um, lucas mulo is still very much accessible as and when i need to consult about different things they still offer their advice and they support you know i've got uh my dear friend um a given Mkari, who is in the media he's a media mogul in south africa who I have access to him and I can always consult with him. And um, through my experience in Ghana, I, I have people like Ola Ray, which you know. I've got people like uh, the, fo the former oh, editor yeah. of, of, of Star Online, um, Kent Mensa, who is also very accessible, uh, you know, to me, offering me support. Most of these are even men, not women. But, uh, you know, I've got other women as well who who, who offer the, 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 the mentorship to me, you know. And, and, and it's not just one person. I cannot credit one person for, for who I am today. It's a cocktail of people. I pick from different uh, you know, from each and every one of them, whatever advice they give me, and I run with it. And I think what they have in common and what they can agree on is that uh, I'm somebody that really makes the most of my opportunities that are given to me, you know, and, 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 and uh, yeah. And I think that's wow. the one thing that they all agree with, you know, that's why they, they, they're more than happy to always, um, you know, see me win they want to see me win you know i can easily go back and tell them hey i'm working on this or i'm doing this and i'll get a word of encouragement you know so really yeah i'm, I'm really blessed in that in, in that regard now let's come to your book um tell us about your book Ninja Affair. what gave you the inspiration to Ninja Scouty Okay, there's an A before though. It's A Niger South Africa, okay. not just Niger. <laughs> well, I've, I'm like you. Know, I, I mean, I've been, I've been <laughs> but, saying I've always been a storyteller. I've been a lover of stories, you know, from 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 Adam, you know. Uh, so mm. where to begin? But what 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 gave you the inspiration to? Mm. What gave you the inspiration to write? Um, this book and what does the well, book Well, the, the book is, is, is a fiction piece. Uh, it's a romance novella. Um, it, it's a love story, an African love story. I mean, if you, if you look around, you realize that in mm. Africa, we don't really have a love story that focuses on integrated couples who are African. Every time we talk about integrated couples, we talk about different races like black, white, or, you know, other people, but hardly do mm -hmm. we really make emphasis of the integrated couples within the African continent because those can also be very complex. You know, imagine a Ghanaian with a South African or a Nigerian with a, someone from Botswana. And because integrated couples are there, you know, they, they always existed. And, and I feel like they do deserve space uh, within um, our stories, um, somebody had to narrate the story for them. And I decided to be that one. I couldn't, unfortunately, pick everybody at, the, at a go. You know, I decided to go with the Niger in South Africa because uh, from my informal research that I've done, I realized that uh, the Nigerians and the South Africans in South Africa, by the way, are the ones who are largely... 
likely to 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 get you know into relationships with each other it's also one of the most controversial um, uh, setups that you can think of in comparison to others for instance i can marry a ganayan tomorrow i don't think it will catch the headlines but the moment everybody finds out that larata is getting married to a nigerian it will start like making uh you know <laughs> headlines so um and it also gave me an opportunity like access to be able to do my research um because there's a nigerian south african community which okay. is based in south africa so i was able to interview a few people who have been married um in, you know in that kind of uh, setup uh, for years who can give me their experience and it was really interesting to see just how much in common everybody had so my book is 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 not really um a memoir you know it's it's not my experience limited to my personal mm. experience even though there is a little bit of my personal experience but it's a, it's a, it's an experience a representation of the general uh, like majority of south african and nigerians in fact when people when i gave the the manuscript out for people to read even like a nine women who had been involved with the nigerian actually said to me they could resonate with the story you know so you can imagine so i i i expect everyone who is not a south african citizen or a nigerian citizen to also be able to 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 resonate with the story it's not limited just to south africans or nigerians if you get what i mean but i mean uh, it centers around nigerians so if someone wants to if- If someone wants to get some of the book where should the person go or is At it the online? moment we are uh, on digit the book is available on digitally on Kindle store as an ebook and as a paperback version uh, I'm really working hard to make sure that the hard copies will be available soon and the covid-19 and the lockdown is not helping in South Africa they've been very strict in terms of locking oh. down for a very long time printers were not working because they're not an essential service so as soon as um you know the printers are back at work we will really uh continue to work on that otherwise um on Kindle store which is also known as Amazon you can go uh there uh, or you can even mm. google a niger southie affair online you know and 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 the link will direct you on her, uh, on amazon and grab yourself a copy um yes and feel free to also share your reviews you know i always love to hear what uh, people were experiencing when they were reading the book yeah people and so seen. far so good we've really had a very overwhelming response to the book and i'm really happy about that Okay um so you were nominated at the African Author Awards how has it changed your attitude towards being an author Hey I hadn't even had I was still warming up to 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 the idea of being an author okay so I I I haven't I hadn't even yet you know started to really believe or it hadn't sinken in that I was an author yet when I got the nomination. So it's 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 a really overwhelming experience mm. for me. It 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 just gave me an an affirmation and it has validated my dream. It has told me that every uh thing, you know, every challenge that I faced on my journey to 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 publish this book because I really faced some challenging stuff. You know, it it told me that this was a a dream worth pursuing. This was something worth chasing. You know, it it really validated me. I don't want to lie. You know, most of the time I tell people not to seek for external validation. You are enough this and that, but but to be honest, mm-hmm. sometimes it's it's really good good to to sometimes see that watch you on the right track it actually just confirmed to me that i'm on the right track i'm doing something good um and and people actually recognize it and 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 they also recognize and you finally get rewarded for all your hard work so it's like phew, it's 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 really it's really just incredible it's it's an incredible experience i'm really excited about the nomination and i'm really excited about the book being in within the top 100 of 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 
uh, of the best sellers on Amazon as well in 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 such a short space of wow. time it's really it's just it's a dream come true you know for me yeah wow. so uh last year um you hosted the 2019 Nigeria Community Excellence yes. Awards in South Africa what was the m- most memorable moments you had hosting ah, that event? I, think, I had so many memorable moments but i think for me it's 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 just the connection i had with my co-host yomi you know there's a there's a moment between the two of us where he actually taught me to do the zanku for the first time while we were on stage and i think for me that 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 was one of my highlights for 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 the night i i i i enjoy working with people that i connect with and that can carry we can carry each other along you know um he, he's just one of those people you know co-hosting is not easy especially when you guys don't know each other from a bow of soap you mean i never knew each other before the awards but um but you know um there's just he's just an amazing person and um a professional you know and 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 i think he made the job so much easier for me and 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 i really also thank the organizers for for pairing us up they doing an amazing job and for me to also see um uh you know overall these uh, foreign nationals in south africa being awarded for the various um you know uh, being celebrated for a change mm. because nigerians are, are always been been you know being sp- talked about for all the controversial things so for a change to be under the same roof in the same environment with with achievers you know it 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 is really great and 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 I really really applaud um you know the organizers and I really thank um Olani Abodedele you know for 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 trusting me uh to to handle the the you know the the role of being co-host for the night. Yeah, it's some it's an experience that I I I I'll um, never forget. And actually if given another chance I would really like to come back and 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 host uh the awards again sometime in the future. Yeah. Would you like to come back to Ghana after this uh, covid oh, it, pandemic? Oh, it's definitely in the cards. I mean, um uh the idea is to go on book tours the idea is to have the book available as far and wide and 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 i mean uh, the 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 person who wrote my foreword for me is ganaing you know uh, charlotte say i i have to is deliver her book oh. to her personally oh. so, um, yes oh, for my super yeah for and the guy who, who 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 designed my My illustration for the book cover is uh, Alfred Junior Achiampong. He's a Ghanaian as well. So I, there's no way mm. I can omit Ghana from from this whole experience. And and by the way, I still have unfinished business with Ghana as well. You know, I, I was speaking with Bolare. In fact, earlier on in the year, before we knew about COVID nineteen, and I told him my plans of coming to Ghana, and I said to him. you know I, i i would really like to do i see myself doing a lot of collaborations with some of the ganaians that uh, you know that i had um, gotten to know during my stay there and it's something that we really are excited about um but as in in terms of exactly when these collaborations will actually materialize i really don't know but it's something that will definitely happen there's no ways i can not have anything done from Ghana uh, i think it's the longest i have i've ever stayed away from home and it has become such a significant part of my story and a significant part of my life i absolutely love ghana um why should anyone pursue a career in journalism and what challenges have you had to overcome in pursuing your career i think our challenges are really um they not necessarily the same you know we we all have different experiences and different stories and uh, with evolution and urbanization and and so many other developments uh in in society things are no longer the same anymore you know um i think 
times have changed you know i think i think if you really want to do journalism well if you really must study journalism really do but um be prepared to to have add ons mm. you know don't don't limit yourself to journalism alone you know um as you can see a lot of media companies have been closing down a lot of media companies have been really struggling you yeah. know that the cable networks are now moving away from being just cable networks and moving into social media you know and and and, and other online platforms and magazines are really struggling so i think if you can if you have the opportunity to study a course that will prepare you for the developments and the changes that we currently facing then great and in the event that you don't i think you should just venture into it with an open mind you know don't limit yourself to just newspapers or just magazines you know i think um being diverse is 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 it, it would really benefit you a lot it will make you employable because the competition is really tough you know and the the space is is quite small it can look big but it's small because you you find somebody who is reading on tv also doubling up on radio the same person has a magazine feature somewhere the same person wants to do something else somewhere so and 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 you really understand why it's needed to do that because i'm sure you know that it doesn't really pay much being a journalist you know so if you really want to if you really want yeah, to survive true. you know you 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 have to you cannot afford to to put all your eggs in one basket so you have to really you know diversify yourself so i think everybody who is interested in journalism shouldn't just be go in you know with that attitude of i am going to be do journalism and that's it and if you can uh, don't limit yourself and so i want to be a for instance a sports journalist that's even worse you know try and be as generic as possible you know uh try and and be not just a presenter try and find out you know have some skills in terms of production you know uh when when it's time for reporting know how to report know how to write scripts you know be able to to be flexible within the production cycle of an entire bulletin don't just limit yourself to one area and say i'm i'm a producer or i'm a presenter or i'm a um what do you call i'm a reporter and so on and so forth i think you know just um uh, having that open mind and and just developing yourself as you go along and you know um uh, it is key right now for where we are going as the world and 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 as the media space at the moment you have to you can't say that you're not technologically friendly anymore whether you liked my i used to struggle with social media at a certain point you know and i remember my former um uh you know uh senior uh, our news editor nanaba namo I'm, sh- i'm sure you know her you know she she's the one that mm. that, that used to really drill yeah. it in us to to get to a place where we are comfortable with social media that it becomes part of us that some that's a woman that's always been forward thinking you know in terms of her approach she's she's very smart in terms of her uh, techniques with her career and i think what one because she has done she's influenced me in many ways but i think one of the major ways that she she really made me to get out of my shell is to to make me aware how important it was for me to be accessible to to the public to be to be more accessible to to the viewers you know to for them to be able to connect with me and 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 all that and i must say that um it has really exposed me and given me you know more opportunities to other roles hadn't i been visible or had a digital footprint i don't think i would have met some of the amazing people that i've met you know because some of these things ha- all happened because we were a, a community online you know so yeah so 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 also be 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 willing to learn and and don't say this is not me you know be be flexible you know i i remember my my instagram was even private you know and she said to me why is your instagram private mm. no open it up let let whoever who wants to follow you follow you open, you know yeah. interact with the people 
and 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 that's exactly what yeah. i did yeah yeah, yeah. so so yeah do you believe anyone can be a broadcaster in news and current affairs i think anyone can be whatever they really are determined to be and depending on how talented or how or rather how let me rather say how disciplined you are because the discipline is extremely important sometimes you may have the talents but not have the discipline uh to work hard to be punctual to stay updated to read to show up or to put in the required work uh you know for you to be taken seriously in your workspace so for me anybody who has the discipline if if you have the desire that's not good enough a desire is good you know but the discipline is really required you know i get a lot of people who say people get away with it because of their looks you cannot simply become a successful broadcaster only because of your looks it's not your looks that show up maybe when you have a 5 a.m call time it's not your looks that stay in a newsroom environment for like 12 hours and something sometimes even more than 12 hours and then you have to also come live uh, most of these bulletins are not recorded they live you know so not everybody yeah, can do handle that you know so so i think sometimes we really under uh, 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 estimate uh, some talents you know and we think everybody can just roll over and 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 come and do a bulletin you know because the people who do it make it look so easy and there's so much work that that comes into that there's so much work before the actual bulletin like you can imagine um clocking in maybe at 8 a.m for your pre-production meeting and and only for you to stay until your prime time bulletin in the evening and that's the only time your story comes out meaning that you've spent all these other hours putting together just a piece of a story to feature in the news bulletin it may be just 3 minutes or 4 minutes or maybe if it's a documentary and you like he uh, more than 4 minutes and that's all that's all that you've done for the day but so much more than that but people watch and they think oh that's it you know but there there's really it, it it really is a hard work so i think we should really change the way we see broadcasters and the way we see people especially those who do live tv it's really not something that you just roll over and do sometimes you plan but sometimes they are breaking news you you know it, it it's not scripted so you have to learn to think on your feet you you know you and and, and all the more reason why you must familiarize yourself with current affairs you need to know what's happening in the world because sometimes you might have in- interviews that you were not aware of because of breaking news and you might need to think on the spot in terms of uh you know your line of question uh for for the person that you're interviewing so and your questions people are always expecting us to be smart and to know everything and and it's these are not things that you suck out of your thumb you know so 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 it 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 it's all of that is preparation and hard work and and those are not possible if you are not disciplined so i think for me discipline is is tops you know over and above talent if you have talent and discipline then the world is your oyster yeah any difference between ghanian news and south african news i wish on ah, you prefer what kind of question is man you putting me on the spot <laughs> <laughs> no there, no yeah, there's definitely there's, there's, there's definitely a difference i mean we are different uh culturally you know what 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 appeals to ghanaians is not necessarily the same that would appeal to south africans so definitely our our news bulletin in terms of our interests will not always be the same however what i have observed is that in terms of uh, the structure and the processes uh, you know um it's it's the same thing you know uh, in terms of what's required for you to put in um it's the same i think in south africa we are a little bit um advanced in terms of technology um so it it makes our our work a little bit 
uh, uh, you know, more easier as opposed to when you're in Ghana. In Ghana, sometimes uh, you try to arrange a Skype interview with someone. I'd like to believe things have have improved since then. I mean, I'm, I'm making reference to when I first started out um, in uh, late 2016, uh, early 2017. Sometimes just getting connected with someone used to be an issue and then you have to end up falling back on a phone call for something that you would have ideally wanted to do on Skype. And I think if, if, if we keep on working on things like our network, our overall network in the country, uh, those things will make, um, you know, running pro uh, productions a little bit uh, easier. And, and, and I think with Ghana, what I really like about Ghana is the work culture is very different from South Africa. You know, the work culture in Ghana, you know, mm. there's no opening or closing time. You are always on standby. And I think <laughs> that's, that's one yeah. thing. But I think for me, it has done me a mm. lot of good because it really gave me uh, an opportunity to, to, to challenge myself and, and put myself out of the box. Before I was like, huh. You know, this is abuse. How do you cope? You know, uh, it forces you to to understand how camera works. You're not a camera person, but sometimes you are forced to understand how the camera works because sometimes you have to direct uh, uh, the, the 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 camera guy that you go with on assignment. Sometimes you you just want to present. You have an idea of what you want to do, but then there's no producer available for that. So you have to now double up and be a producer and a presenter at the same time you know so and and and, and i think that affords you the, the 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 opportunity to to harness your skills um in diverse ways right when i left south africa i had limited experience in terms of uh, I, I, I was limited in uh, reports and pre and presentations you know and a little bit of of, of writing uh, i used to sometimes assist in the research desk as well however in Ghana, I was able to really, um, you know, to, to, to really diversify a lot within the, the newsroom. And, and, and it, when I, by the time I left, I, I was, I left richer than how I was when I came. Let me just put it that way. So it, it was really a, a, an amazing experience for the most part, for the most part, not every day, sometimes very frustrating, but um, for the most part, it was really overall an amazing um, experience. How was your experience as a contributing writer for the Ghanaian Lifestyle Magazine, Ago, and um, GH1? Well, as you remember, I, I had a column called The Garden on the Star FM online. I think that's where I started with my writing, you know, and I, I enjoyed the column. With the mm, column, it was yes. easier. Yeah, with the column, the it was easier because um, I had to just make sure that the that the editor approves. Uh, at the time, the editor was Kent Mensa. So I would have to send my things via Kent, and once it's approved, then they will publish it on my behalf. It was so much easier. But by the time I joined Agu Magazine, it was a different ball game altogether. I became much more involved in the editorial team. Um, at a certain point, I even uh, had to interview because I, I ended up writing cover stories for the magazine where I would have to go and interview some of the people uh, who are our covers for that particular issue. I mean, um, there was an issue that we had with Yvonne Nelson on the cover. I had to interview her. You know, the, there was an issue we had with it, some of the musicians, including Reggie Rockstone and Stone Boy. I can't, I don't know if you remember that, that, that feature, that issue where we had a group of musicians. I had to put together that, um, you know, and, 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 and it challenged me to be more involved in the editorial process mm. of the magazine as opposed to just submitting my articles because with the garden, I would write from wherever whether it's from the house or wherever, and I would just email my, my, my piece, my article to Kent, and it would be published, you know. But with Argo, I had to be more involved mm. in the editorial processes, and, and, and it's an experience that I, that I really enjoyed. And also, scripting for Revealed with Bollare also helped. And all these things were sort of a different style, 
you know, they are all different styles of writing, you know, and, and, and Francis Aben, uh, uh, someone that I really value as well in my career, also at a certain point, just advised me and said, you know, you need to be aware and be careful because you're so diverse. Sometimes you seem to be communicating a certain way on a different platform. So perhaps you should try and look for that connect, even with your articles on the garden. Who do you write for? You know, can Ghanaians really connect with what you're writing and all that? And, and, and it's something that I really thought of and I was like, okay, I need to be careful when I'm with Argo. I know that uh, I need to understand the, the, the people, the readers, the clients, you know, and, and I need to um, construct my writing in such a way that they would be able to connect with them. Same way that I would when I'm doing Revealed, which is about luxury, you know. So the styling would be, the style of writing would be different. When I come back to the garden, the style would be different. If I'm in the newsroom and I have to report to Dansua or whoever is in charge uh, that day, uh, or Curtis, you know, uh, then my scripts have to fit, you know, um, uh, my English also used to be an issue sometimes, you know, pronouncing some of the Ghanaian, the local names, um, there was a problem. Oh, Kafui Day, you know, that's, that's somebody I will never forget. Kafui Day literally held me with by the hand and he would literally go through certain uh, words with me before I go on air. I, I would uh, highlight some of the words when I have a time and I would come back to him. Sometimes he would even have to repeat two times, three times. He, he was so patient, you know, and, 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 and he, would, he would keep on coming back to me. In the event that I got it wrong, he would actually give me feedback and say, you said this but you're supposed to say it like this, you know, and, 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 and it's something that I really, really appreciate because, hey, sometimes in the work environment, nobody cares, you know, <laughs> nobody cares. So mm -hmm. everybody is busy trying to be good, you know, and, and everybody is busy doing their jobs. Nobody is there to come and baby you or train you. So I, I really value Kafui for, for taking time out and understanding that I wasn't that well you know, um, uh, acquainted with some of the local uh, uh, words and, and names and, uh, you know, offered himself to assist me in that regard. So I'm even using this opportunity to thank him in case he, 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 he catches this video. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah. <laughs> in your opinion, is the media doing enough in helping fighting the... Um, Again, yeah, what is enough? What is enough? Remember the media, they are not a, a law unto themselves. You know, the media uh, sh 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 works hand in hand with the government. Um, and in the same breath, uh, the media is there to just communicate, to reveal certain things to, 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 to the public, you know. Mm. Um, it's also, it can also be a voice for the people. But we, uh, the media needs to be given that platform, you know. It's not something that um, mm. you just wake up and you start going to a hospital, for instance, to go and look for patients of COVID-19. To even access some of these places, to access some of the information, some of the data that they have, you need permits. You need, uh, sometimes you need to arrange in advance. So when there's too much red tape, you know, when, they, when there isn't transparency sometimes, that can make uh, the life, uh, the work of the media rather very difficult, um, you know. So, but, but I really respect those in the media space who, who really go the extra mile in making sure that they, they get the information and the data that they need to get from the relevant people so that they are able to communicate this to ordinary people. Remember when people watching, uh, are watching the news, for instance, most above everything else is to get information. You know, you inform, you teach, you know, mm -hmm. and, and all that. So, now, most of them rely on, 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 the, on the on media to inform them in, in what is going on. So the data for it to be accurate is, is of high importance for the media. And you can't just make these things up. You know, you need stakeholders that will 
cooperate with with the media houses to make sure that the media has the the, the information that they need to share. Um, I think the media is really doing uh, as much as it can. And uh, we can only do so much when we have the cooperation of other stakeholders. For instance, if we, if the Department of Health uh, or the, the presidency, for instance, wants to do a media release, they would have to inform us and we have to make sure that everybody else gets to know that the president is going to give a COVID-19 update at a certain time. So watch you know, so that you hear what's going on. Uh, when the numbers have, 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 have increased in terms of the affected, the affection rates uh, or the number of deaths or the number of recoveries, yeah. it's our responsibility to, to make sure that people, are, you know, they get updated in terms of what's going on. But we, this yeah. is not, we are not involved in those surveys. We're not involved in the hospitals. We're not the healthcare workers. So we need them you know, to, to give us access to, to these information, you know, the right to information, the right to freedom of press, you know. <clears throat> I don't think we are 100% there yet because sometimes journalists, as you might have uh, remember in some instances, some journalists' lives get uh, uh, threatened or are at risk for, for sharing some certain information. Um, and, and, and it which brings to question the, the freedom of press really. You know, uh, we're not there yet completely, but I, I think we, we're getting there. And, and, and I think having people that are brave in the media space is something that we shouldn't take for granted because these people are the ones that are making sure that they really fight for the rest of us, you know, to make sure that no journalist or no media person, excuse me, you know, gets in, uh, being intimidated to not do their work. And, and also uh, they have the right to safety and, and protection whilst they are on duty. Uh, my last question: What new projects are we to expect from you next year? Next year, next <laughs> you know what? I'll give you a simple <laughs> scenario. Beginning of 2020, I wrote in my journal okay. so many plans. Guess what? COVID mm -hmm. happened, and so many of those plans had to be changed. Wow. So I, I don't think I want to throw myself in there. And, and share plans for 2021 yet. However, what I will say is that as soon as I have the green light to continue with my plans for 2020, which is to uh, take my book on tours, to do more author engagements, um, to do more collaborations, um, I will definitely do that. Uh, and who knows, maybe another book as well. <laughs> so you'll just have to wait and see. Yeah. Okay. Um, sorry, last one. Um, if you were given a chance to participate in politics, what area of politics will you explore and what impact will you make on behalf of South African women? I think uh, I, I, have, I have options. It's either I'm within communications, uh, media and communications, or I am with foreign affairs, you know, um, uh, because uh, I'm, I'm passionate with both areas. Or I could be placed within the gender office because I'm equally as passionate with women issues and children issues. So uh, I think um, I'm, I'm that kind of a person that you would easily place or, or deploy in, in any sector. I think if you put mm. me in the arts and culture, I would, I, would do, I would do a decent job. If you put me anywhere within communications and media, I would do a good job. If you put me within foreign affairs, I think I would do an even better job because uh, I've had the experience of, 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 you know, that is outside South Africa. Uh, I sort of understand... Um, I understand uh, some of the the how some countries, uh, you know, operate. I, I culturally, on a cultural level, I can relate with with people who are non South Africans. 
you know, and I think it's very important when we when we deal within the foreign um, uh, affair.